Great friends, welcome to the Kaplan and Crew Show with just the crew one final time this week. Alex Padilla, John Brown are with you guys as Scott Kaplan is on vacation in Florida. And you know what? I'm starting to think that maybe he should stay there because the Padres just won't stop winning as long as he's wearing that swag change shirt and he's in Florida. We will get to all that coming up. But I wanted to start off by saying thank you to Seven Mile Casino, the studio sponsor of the podcast shed of my studio of scott's studio seven mile casino just a few minutes downtown go check them out this weekend if you're looking for something to do they're wide open california is open and so are they indoor gambling everything you need is right there seven mile casino thank you to our sponsor toy holistics who hi- sponsors the highlight of the day right now the promo code is machado and by the way still killing it still killing it as long as that promo code is machado we have Mountain Trust Mortgage, Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299. If you're looking to buy, sell, refinance your home, you know who to call. That's Gary Cooper. Corky Pest Control, 1-800-901-1102. Do you miss yelling, Corky's Browner? No, nah, not yet. I'm working on a new drop. I'm working on a new way to throw that in there. So might throw a little, might throw a little something else in there, but yeah. Well, for right now, if you have any pest control needs, you know who to call. It's just one man, and that's Corky's, 1-800-901-1102. Oh, two fellas. What does Scott always say? If you're looking for a little additional help in the bedroom, huh. are you feeling down? Are you not as energized as you once used to be? Well, that's when you call Total T Clinic, Dr. David Alexander, the Total T Clinic. Get your testosterone checked today for free. Visit them, totaltclinic.com. And finally, if you're looking to save money on your home or business, all you got to do is call Sp- or hit up our friend Spencer. Spencer at hessolar.com to check out solar paneling for your commercial or residential 858-699-0760. But really just hit up Spencer at hessolar.com. All right. First of all, welcome in everybody. We appreciate you guys that have been tuning in with us all week. I know what Browner said. Yeah, I know what Bert said yesterday was offensive when he said nobody listens to this when Scott's here, but some of you do. Because I see you guys on the chat. So we appreciate you guys. And if you are watching on YouTube or if you're coming across us for the first time, subscribe. Turn on notifications. Leave a comment. Like. We can never have enough subscribers. We actually don't have enough subscribers. We don't have that many. So keep hitting that subscribe button over on Kaplan and Crew. Visit kaplanandcrew.com to find us anywhere. John Browner. All that's out of the way now. There's my three-minute speech to start the show. Last night, the Padres. This is my first thought. I, I, I have not been paying attention to anything but the Padres this week. I watched all the game on Monday till 11 p.m. I was at Petco till 11 p.m. on Tuesday. And last night I stayed up and I watched this whole thing. Didn't even realize what time it was. I was so entertained by the game yesterday. On Monday, I was like, yo, it's getting late. Last last night, I was entertained the entire time. And when Mark Melanson comes in, the shark, I just get nervous because he's not a big strikeout closer like this traditional closer. He always kind of seems to get a guy on base and make it interesting. But he has the most saves in all of baseball. And again, the Padres win their seventh in a row. They are now seven and three against the Dodgers after sweeping LA. And I said it before the, sh- I said it during the show yesterday. And I texted to my buddies. I was like, why are they chanting beat LA? They should be chanting sweep LA. And then I saw Kevin AC about the sixth, seventh inning. They changed the graphic from beat LA to sweep LA. And there you go, Browner. That's my first thought. Sweep LA. I felt like today's show didn't need a hit list no need to be angry this is a day of happiness are we rejoicing today this is a day of rejoice this is a day of found joy i i got so much just so much joy out of fat albert making the last out look man they talk about oh albert pujols hit a home run here he did this he did that when he took brought his fat self up to the plate i knew one thing was gonna happen he was gonna get out (laughs) hey they what they've shown you, again, to start the season, I know once the season starts, the trajectories go up and down. They're missing guys. We're missing guys. Who are we missing? Pitchers. Lamette. Oh, okay. Okay. We're missing. Lamette's actually healthy. But we're we're missing guys. So Matt Strom, Drew Pomeranz. Right. We're missing guys. They're missing guys. So I don't want to hear who they're missing. Okay? That was Trevor Bauer pitching yesterday. They should have had no problems yesterday, but they're giving up back-to-back home runs. When you talked about this team, when people were talking about this team to start the season, the Dodgers I speak of, certain people 
Bro, they were the greatest. They're going to be the greatest team ever. People on this show were saying they were going to win 100-plus games. Okay? We just swept them. And we just won uh, seven, six out of seven against them. So when we are now looking at this, yes, the Giants keep winning. I know. I saw it. It's ridiculous. It's unheard of. But we got the Diamondbacks next. Yep, this could be. We might be looking at a 10 spot. We might have to, like, legitimately remove the swag chain shirt from Scott. Like, it might be stuck on his body by the time Monday comes around. By the time we hit Monday, we could be looking at 10 straight wins or three straight series wins. I will take either. And that puts us in a place where I thought we would get back to. So I'm here today to celebrate. Not because we beat the Dodgers. Just because they're starting to put things together in a way that I feel like they can sustain. See, when we talk about sustainability, it's what the Giants are doing. But I don't think they can keep it up. I don't think they have the necessary firepower. I think this team does. I think they can sustain what they're doing. Maybe not seven in a row to, to turn it into 20 in a row. Not something like that. But winning seven out of 10 games for the next seven out of 10, six out of 10 for to the end of the year. They're getting hits from their marquee guys, and they're getting hits from pinch hitters. They're making defensive plays. Manny Matrado is somewhere out on a warning track. Why? Yeah. What? Like, it's happening. I thought yesterday Heath Bell made – uh, two good points. When you watch right now, right now, by the way, I'm speaking of right now. I always speak of what's happening right now. I know that Browner loves to make a whole, hey, relax, it's going to be at the end of the year. But I always speak of right now because that's what's happening right now. I think right now you can see the hugest, the biggest difference, hugest I don't think is a word, the biggest difference between the Dodgers right now and the Padres right now is not health. It's, it's team chemistry. It's fun. It's having each other's back. When the Padres hit home runs, the joy in that locker room or in that in the dugout is on another level compared to what the Dodgers did. When the Dodgers scored, they're like, he said it perfectly. He's like, Yeah, we're supposed to do this. We're half, we have to win. We're, we're, we're this is what we're supposed to do. Whereas the Padres do it, they celebrate it. They, they kind of pick each other up. He also said another thing, which we have said as well. It's not necessarily Tatis. Tatis didn't do anything this series at all. Tatis actually played pretty bad this series. He almost, I mean, he did cost them a run yesterday. It's Hassan Kim. It's Victor Caratini. It's Jay Cronenworth. It's guys that you are hoping can contribute mm -hmm. and that are contributing. Mm -hmm. So it's a team game. You're coming in. You got Darvish. You got your three, basically your three aces, right? You got Darvish. You had Musgrove. You had Snell. But you also had the bullpen come in and pretty much hold their own. Yeah. At least when I was in attendance yeah. yesterday, Neil Nabil Krasbat, two and a, two and a third scoreless innings yesterday. Like those are guys that you kind of get a little weary about. So when you look at just these two teams right now, there's a big difference in them. There's a in the mood, in the in the vibe around them. And I know the Dodgers got swept, so obviously in the post game interview they're going to be pissed. And you will play the Bauer soundbite later, but. That open honesty like that, if one of the Padres players said that, what would we be saying today? It would be it would be trouble. Yeah. It'd be trouble in the water. And but I, I gotta say real quick about Bauer, we will get to him because the whole Machado, Bauer, uh, he's my daddy, home runs. Oh, I, we got I got stats on stats on stats. I got we'll show you everything, but I gotta say a hot take right now, uh -oh. JB. Uh oh. Get the bracket gonna, ready. This is my bracket. I like Trevor Bauer. Are you kidding me? I like Trevor. <laughs> really? I really wish there was more players like him in baseball. Well, that's open, true. I agree. Guys that are super open. Guys, not necessarily on my team, just in general. I will say that. Like, not. I like Trevor Bauer. Right. I like. I think I've always said this. I think the sport needs a villain. I think sports need villains. I think when you have someone to root against, it's almost as fun as rooting for. So. Having someone as open and as honest and having his own vlog and not ever biting his that words you follow. that you, like he is he's entertaining to watch. And he's actually really he's actually a good pitcher. Like 
that that's the other thing too. He may not use the sticky stuff anymore. He might give up a bunch, bunch of home runs because he does give up a bunch of home runs, but he's actually a really good pitcher. So he kind of, in my opinion, he kind of backs it up. But I love it, dude. I and I know people don't like him, and I understand why. But I think baseball needs more of him. I I think baseball has a lot of guys like that, but it's poorly covered. It's baseball is really a regional sport at this point. And so I think every roster has their own Trevor Bauer. I don't think they're the guy who is there. Trevor Bauer can back it up like Trevor Bauer can. I'll agree with you on that standpoint. Trevor Bauer can back up the talk. And that's the best part about him. Yeah. That he can back up what he says. I wouldn't go as far as saying that I'm, I'm a fan of him. I like him. I find him to be entertaining. And I Yesterday, it, you said he was turning you, though. He is. He is. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. He is. Because I like a guy who provides content. I like a guy who will go to the press conference. He owns his own press conferences, but he'll tell you like it is. He'll say what he has to say. He doesn't He doesn't coach speak you. He doesn't Tom Brady you with a bunch of blah, 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 nothing, nothing, nothing quotes. So yeah. you've got to want that if you're a fan. Now, as a traditional fan, you might find that annoying because you don't really want to hear from the guys more often if it's not for something positive. But you need guys who does what he does. I also think there's a lot of media members that always complain about players not saying anything. Players never say anything. They always give you the same generic answers. Right. And then when you have a player that gives you stuff, you get angry about it. Like, oh, he's saying too much or he doesn't. You know, it's like the, I I, I don't. I prefer my players to say things. I like that Kevin Durant fights back at people on Twitter. I like Russell Westbrook not giving a damn anymore and just cursing everybody out. And I, I kind of compare it to like uh, when Floyd Mayweather was fighting and he was this mo when he's turned to when he turned to money Mayweather. How about that? When he turned into money Mayweather, people hated it, but I always respected it because he just went out and kept winning. I think, and that's where I think Conor McGregor has lost people is because he's still talking immense amount of losing. trash, but he keeps losing. So, I think yeah, it, as far as Bauer goes, I like it. The guys that you're mentioning, they all have something in common. They're rich. They're free. No. They're free. They're free in the sense of well, everybody's free, but unless you're in prison, stay strong. Every one of those guys are absolutely rich, and if they didn't play another down, if they didn't play another second, if they didn't throw another pitch or take another at bat, they'd be fine. And that gives them the power or that gives them the gravitas to say whatever they want. Russell, it's the NBA is my favorite because of this part of it. It's because NBA guys will say whatever they want to say. Yep. They don't coach speak you they, unless they're a rookie. Football players are the worst. Football players are the worst possible person to interview. One game at a time. They don't say anything. Tom Brady onto, now at least onto jokes. Cincinnati. Right. Tom Brady at least <laughs> jokes now because he's on the Bucks and he'll make right. fun of things here and there. But Aaron Rodgers is a very stuffy guy. Like, Patrick Mahomes doesn't really do a lot of interviews, by the way. But when he does, he doesn't say anything either. He's very, very, very bland. The football mentality of guys not saying anything. It's almost like they don't remember Deion Sanders made a name for himself being a character. Chad Johnson, or Ocho Cinco, or whatever you want to call him, he's still making money off that. Tyrell Owens is still making money off that. So they're Terrible. whatever. Terrible. There are guys terrible. <laughs> there are guys out there who do it and know how to take advantage of it. But those guys in baseball really don't exist when it comes to being the guy. Like you'll never see Mount Mike Trout say anything worth printing in a paper. Right. Never. Um, before I forget, because I want to play this video and I don't think I could play it for television, so I'm gonna play it right now. My favorite part of the game was what happened in the stands. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you were paying attention, man, but the fans. There was two home runs I was in the first inning, and both were incredible catches by the fans. I'll play that. But what stole my heart and what has gone viral, and I have <laughs> seen a bunch of people tweet. I actually didn't see it. My buddy was the one that sent me the video that I posted on Twitter. He's like, because he was watching the ESPN feed. I was watching the Bally's feed. I don't know if it's a separate feed or if I just missed it. But yesterday, a fan, after the Caratini home run, mm -hmm. I believe it was, um, who has been discovered. I saw him on Instagram. He has... His Instagram story is like a million little squares on top because everybody seemed to recognize him and he got tagged on Instagram. Um, so after the home run, he's high-fiving everybody in the stands until he sees a Dodger fan and he does this to him. He gives him the best bird 
of all time. <laughs> like I, I, I genuinely don't know the story yet. I don't know if they know each other. That is the story. I don't know. That's the story. Okay. You just watched it. Yeah, I hope. And I told my fiance this last like she was I showed her and she was laughing herself. And I was like, I hope they don't know each other. I hope that they just were two fans talking trash to each other. And they, I mean, they didn't throw blows, which is great. It's fantastic. Right. Just because we show fights here doesn't mean we're advocating for fights here. No, not at all. No, but if it happens, send it to us. Um, And he just gives them the best. I just thought that was like the best middle finger bird I've seen in a long maybe ever dude when i was when not since stone cold steve austin the, did it to the, vince mcmahon double bird yeah what i will say is when, you've been to the, one of the dodger padre games i've been to one of the dodger padre games that happens a lot they just so happen to catch it that square on the screen yeah. it happens a lot i guarantee you those dudes didn't know each other but at that point in time there was no one else to high five <laughs> and he made eye contact <laughs> and he got the bird yeah Bam. because because if you're listening and you don't know what we're saying, if you haven't seen it yet, a, a Padre fan is high fiving other Padre fans right. after a random, just run. random high five, and party. then kind of turns towards the field again. And below him, a row down, he still has his hands up. He sees a Dodger fan and just goes, "What? Bam! Middle finger." Hey, he pointed to him first. He pointed yeah. to him first. Like, you. Hey, you! Pow. Bam! Yeah, it was, Great. dude. That was the best, and I think it's been picked up by a bunch of people. It's definitely been tweeted out a bunch by a lot of people. I know my video like kind of got a crap ton of views too. That was I. I just love to play it, bro. Like, look at it because it's, it's just, awesome. Because you, because <laughs> when he when he looked around and realized he had ran out of guys to high five, he absolutely was like, "All right, give me a Dodger fan. Hey, you, buddy, eye contact, bird." Yep. Other things that we're going to talk about today, we will jump into the game more uh, coming up here shortly. We will talk about the basketball games coming up. Our boy Jason Lawhead's going to join us. I don't even think he's in San Diego. I think he's opening for somebody again this weekend somewhere, or he might be headlining somewhere. Um, the tortilla throwing incident, Browner. Did you see the interview with the guy that bought the tortillas? Oh my God, this thing's still going. Yeah, and I saw videos of UCSB soccer throwing tortillas. Uh, not recently, but I did see a video of that actually finally happening. Um, that We'll talk about that just because it's just to wrap that up. Um, you got the Atlanta Hawks, Trey Young scoring 48 points last night. God. Uh, there's, a, but there's breakout parties for some new superstars in the NBA, and they're coming from Atlanta and Phoenix. Uh, Devin Book, I mean, Devin Booker will play tonight. Kawhi Leonard is still out. Chris Paul is coming back tonight. So it doesn't look so great for the Clippers. I'm telling you, Kawhi Leonard has a torn ACL. This is yeah. He's not coming back. I don't know why they're not. Just uh, announce uh, it and everybody right. move on. What of his history tells you that he would play through a knee injury? What? The guy, nobody this, nobody plays through a torn ACL. This is, this, is the, this is the guy who invented load management. He not playing. So I wish yeah. people would just stop saying he's out. He's he's done. He's done. But he's out. So um also, did you see the new home of the Holiday Bowl? Petco Park. Did you catch these renderings, John Browner? Oh, please. Please show. Yeah. We no, we'll get to it here shortly because oh, wow. we're running out of time here. The Holiday Bowl, because there is no more Qualcomm, uh, and there is no San Diego State West Stadium yet. This Holiday Bowl is moving to Petco. For next season, I will definitely go to this, and it looks great. And I don't know if you guys have ever been to Petco for anything other than a baseball game. I have been for a soccer game, and I'll talk about it because they moved the field. It used to go from third base to right field. Okay, now it's going from first base to left field. It'll go like that. So we'll talk about that. And then it could have got crazy last night on a baseball field. The Tijuana Toros oh God. got a fight yesterday, Browner. And I know you're laughing at me, dude. The and who? I know you're like, what? But have you seen this? No. Dude. I'm sorry. I can't I can't get myself to watch a Tijuana Tio's baseball not, fight. I'm listen, I I, I love Mex I love Mexico. I'm not watching the Mexican baseball league. I just know that TJ has a team and they're called the Toros and they got badass jerseys. They're all blacked out. They wear black pants. They got a great logo. It just so happened that it came across my Twitter feed last night. So I will play because it's not a regular baseball fight. This is like. Is it a brawl? This guy could have ended up in jail. How about that? Oh, like How the There's my tease. This is off to a good start. The guy that got hit Ooh. could have easily, easily been in jail right now for like murder. 
I'm not even exaggerating. Like what he's not, but it could have been that bad. You know what's funny? Anything you do on a on an athletic field as professionals, no one's going to real jail. No one's going to real jail. No, but didn't like in hockey, this guy like swung his hockey stick and hit a guy over the head, hospitalized him, and didn't he go to jail? No, they 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 didn't press any charges. He was never. Are you ar- sure? He was never arrested. He was never arraigned. They didn't press any. The guy who he hit didn't press any charges. The team had him arrested. Oh, so he did go to jail. See, when people say jail, I think they meant like <laughs> like prison, like time. County. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Like, I don't think he went to to Pelican Bay. But anyways, uh, we'll get we'll talk about all of that. But we come back. Okay, we're Lorenzo. Gonna get in, we're going to get into the the game last night. The sweep. We'll talk about it all coming up right now. This is Kaplan and crew. Welcome back, everybody. This is Kaplan and crew with just the crew, myself, Alex Padilla, John Browner, with you guys. Today is our Friday. We won't be here tomorrow because John Browner's taking a day off to go to New York. I don't know why you keep spreading this lie. We there. What? Wait, are you not going to New York? Tell the story in order. There was okay. never a plan for there to be a show tomorrow. Okay, this was decided last week when Scott was here. The three of us talked about it. It was decided that there wouldn't be a show on Friday, and so therefore, I made alternate plans. So there is no beer Friday because uh, we are not on Friday. Uh, I will give a quick shout out to Ale Smith who sent us a but a box of merch today nice. uh, that I got. So I will be handing that out next week. And then Browner has booked us a cocktail place for next week, I believe. Right? Yep, the second. So that'll be coming up next week. But as far as today's show goes, there's really only one thing that's really on my mind. We will talk about other things, but the only thing that's on my mind is the Padres sweeping the Dodgers. And like Browner said, they are now six, they have six wins in their last seven games against the Dodgers. They're a total of seven and three this season against the Dodgers. And another seven, they have seven games won in a row. And I'm not going to give 100% credit to Scott Kaplan for breaking them out of their funk. But if he keeps dropping these pictures, man, if he keeps dropping this fire on us, I might have to start giving him credit for the entire seven-game win streak the Padres are on. Look, and in addition to that, I better see it today. Yeah, I so I don't know why. He, I don't know why he does this to us. He doesn't te- te- text us pictures until after we're done with the show, so we can't even talk about today's picture because I, had, I haven't got it yet. And yesterday he didn't even text it to us. Rachel texted to us. But he, regardless, if you haven't heard or seen on Thursday last week. After the Padres got swept by the Rockies, I mean, that feels like a month ago, but I think that's what happened, right? They got swept by the Rockies in Colorado. They came home to take on the the Reds for four. I made a mention about on Wednesday about the Padres record since the swag chain shirt came out. I believe they were 10 and 15 at that point when Mm -hmm. I brought it up. And Scott, just on his own on Thursday, decided to wear the shirt on the show. He says, I'm wearing this shirt to switch the mojo around the swag chain and then because we don't let after, anything go after hating after you two hating on the swag chain please continue right yeah we we have we have made comments about uh, the swag throw that chain. don't forget yeah. to throw that in there yeah we have made comments about i mean it's just a fact they were 10 and 15 since they brought it out but then Scott decides, I'm going to wear this shirt. By the way, this shirt's right here over my left shoulder. This is the shirt I'm talking about. If you've never seen it, come to our YouTube channel, Kaplan and Crew. And I don't know how we went into, hey, if they win tonight, you got to wear it until they lose. I made a bet I think with that them. was you, right? Yeah. I challenged him. And I think he didn't care, A, because he didn't assume they were going to sweep the Reds, and B, he was going to go to Florida, and he wouldn't have to take it to Florida for a vacation. Little did he know that on Thursday would be the turning point into this crazy run because the Padres went down in the ninth, and Hosmer hit a game tying home run, and Caratini hit a walk off home run, and now the Padres are on a freaking roll. They've won seven in a row. They beat the Dodgers. Scott is wearing this shirt on vacation for his girlfriend's birthday in <laughs> all parts of South Florida: Boca Raton, Pompano Beach, uh, Boca del Rista Phase Four. All of it. All of it. All of it. All he is rocking the swag change shirt all over Trump Country, and. The Padres are not losing. And so today, there is no game, mm. but he still has to wear it. Yep. Because we say you have to wear it every day until the Padres lose. And the Padres, once again, did not lose. And we'll get over this game right now because it started off with the bang. The Crone Zone, John Browner. The Crone 
Can we get Zone. another nickname? No. High drive, right field. We are still in the crowd zone. <laughs> Jake Cronenworth, <laughs> the trifecta of home runs. One in each of the three games against the Dodgers. Oh, this is the crowd zone. <laughs> Little kids at the end there are my they favorite. Love it, uh, they, they love it, dude. They love it. Uh, but we talked about how Tatis didn't really do anything this series. He struck out a bunch yesterday against Trevor Bauer. Right. He, Bauer won this round of their of their battle. Uh, but Cronenworth in the in this three game series, like like Don says, we entered the Crone Zone. He had five hits, three home runs, six RBIs, and two doubles. Cronenworth absolutely owned it. Without Cronenworth, they don't sweep this series. That's for damn sure. So when you say, "Can we change the name?" It's like the swag change shirt. No, eh. no, no. It's not. No, it's not. not? The Crone Zone. I get it. Uh, uh, the announcer coined it, so we want to try to go with it. But get, get back, get back in the bag, man, and come out with something else. The Chrome Zone just doesn't, doesn't sound. Doesn't have no flash to it. Got no flash. How do you make a T-shirt out of the Chrome Zone? Oh, it's very easy. I had a terrible Photoshop um, that I did and I posted. I think you could easily make a, a a shirt. Look at look at this crappy. Welcome to the Chrome Zone. See, this, huh? this is what I'm saying. This is the huh? problem. This That's is the great. problem. This That's is great. the problem. This is the problem. That's terrible. Okay. You're terrible. Well, my Photoshop skills are terrible, but that's not terrible. The name pretty much guarantees what type of swag you will produce from the name. So until you get something cooler, it's going to be all weird. Well, you sound like a hater right now because we are in the crone zone. Uh, it's like the danger zone, like Kenny Loggins. No. We're in the crone zone. Okay. If you say so. I mean, because I got, I got nothing better. We don't have a nickname for Manny. Like, there's no nickname for Manny. It's just Manny, Manolo, Machado. Well, that seems cool to me. What's Manolo? And Manolo is the full name for Manny in Spanish. See, that's cool. You never seen Scarface? Yeah. Manolo. You know, Scarface kind of overrated, but okay. I don't love the movie Scarface either, but I, everybody's seen Scarface, and Manolo right. is in Scarface. I'm pretty sure that's yes. not where the name comes from, but the probably the most popular Manolo is Manolo from Scarface. So I, I I just don't like the name, but the boy's okay. balling. Regardless, Manny Machado, absolutely balling. High drive, deep left field for Manny. Padres go back to back. Manny Machado with his 12th of the year. Are you familiar with how much Manny Machado owns Trevor Bauer in their history? Not just as a Dodger, but just in their back since their Baltimore and Cleveland days. I knew that they pitched, they played in the other league together. I didn't know what the numbers look like. So Trevor Bauer self-admittedly has said that Manny Machado is his, is his daddy. Like he has actually said this out loud. What? Uh, so before the series, I'm like, oh man, Machado, he is my dad. I, I can't get the guy dad. out. Whatever. So that was on Barstool. He actually had this cause he was doing this interview with uh with Mike Clevenger, Sunshine. Okay. And and our Dallas guy Braden, and Dallas Braden, who works for Barstool. And they were talking about, I think Trevor Bauer was still a free agent. And they were saying, like, you should join the Padres because that way you don't have to face Machado anymore. And then he starts talking about how I just can't get the guy out. I I can't. I have tried everything. And yesterday he tried it again. He threw seven straight sliders to Machado, the same pitch over and over. He's like, that's my best weapon I have against them. And then on the eighth pitch, he hit a home run. But if you didn't know, Browner, here are the exact numbers for Manny Machado against Trevor Bauer. His average is 520. God. On base percentage of 586, five home runs, and seven RBIs. Hey, man, look, if you, <laughs> you pay this guy all this money, and when it comes time to, to get big-time guys out, and when, it, when the rubber meets the roll down the season, and he can't get Machado out, oh, God, they're going to they're gonna rail on this guy. The Dodge, if you're a Dodger fan, how much patience do you have for Trevor Bauer? We think it's funny. We mm -hmm. think it's fun because we are not losing to him. So if if you are if you're a fan and, and he's doing all this and you're losing, and then he basically comes out and trashes your team by saying that they wanted it more, they played harder than we did. Okay. Okay. You better you better stop giving up back to back home runs, bro. Yeah. So, and also the best part about that, not the best part, but a very impressive part about that Machado home run was the fan who just snagged it 
as it was about to hit that Callaway golf ball that Jason Finley hit me up about yesterday. He goes, hey, how about that product placement? And I was like, yeah, you guys are pretty good at your job there, buddy. That good ball would have ricocheted like crazy if it had hit that, yeah. hit that golf ball. Dude, that was, the, that was right there. Because Manny didn't make the diving catch in right field, that was the play of the game. You know, I – the amount of hustle he showed on that play, that that was still a good play to me. Yeah, just I have it. Just because you don't make the play. Look at this. So the ball gets smashed to right field. They've got the shift on. And I'm looking at the screen at home, and Manny's just running. I'm like, why? Oh, my God. Manny's going to catch this ball. Yeah. And, he, and he just barely misses the ball in right field. It goes past his outstretched glove. But see, he looked a little hurt after that, too. He did. He looked gassed. He looked hurt. He was he Dude, did you because the play did you notice do you remember the play before he actually made the jumping catch uh -huh. in the air? And I think he made the first out of that inning too. So he could have easily made all three outs. And spectacular and, fashion being the and last. I think two. if he didn't I think if he didn't make the first two, he has that extra step to get to that one to make the play of the year of baseball if he makes that play. I think the ball was hit so hard. That's why he was able to make the second out. That ball that would have been an impressive catch for anybody. But yeah. from where he ran to where he had to catch the ball, yeah, I I still think it's a good play. I sat when they played the Mets. I sat over there, and they do the switch so often when yeah. he's in right field. And Don or Ma, was yeah, Don was making the joke. He's like, I wonder if Machado wears a Fitbit because he probably gets his steps all day going from right to third, right to third, right to third. And I've made the joke, but I sincerely think a first of all, Machado should be a, a All Star third base. Oh yeah. But if he doesn't, he plays so much in right. Can he be an all-star right fielder? He does it at least once a game. He's made some incredible, especially against the Dodgers. He threw guys out from right field at first base. You don't see that for anybody with any other team. I think his leadership and what he's doing on the field right now, in addition to what he's doing in the clubhouse. you, I, I said this when they first signed him, and I got a lot of flack for this. I said they signed him to turn the ship around. They signed him and they gave him the money that they gave him, knowing that this is our turn to show people we are serious. And then I also said part of that money is for leadership, to be a leader in the locker room, to be the face of the franchise. Little did we know he wouldn't be the face that long. But nevertheless, he set the ship on the course that we're now on today and going forward because uh, that guy came into the locker room amongst all the hate about not hustling, not being a good teammate, and was the exact opposite for the San Diego Padres. And I think you, they, they're getting more than their money's worth. You know how some players, like, you can't quantify how much they're worth. He's hitting that point now. You can't yeah. you can't really say, okay, well, he's worth it. It's, point, it's, it's limitless. What he's giving to the other guys on the roster, in addition to the play that he's generating, it's, it's limitless. I think it's pretty obvious if you watch Padres every night. That he is the leader of this team. It's not Eric Hosmer. I think when no. you, to compare it to like football, you know, captains come out. Eric Hosmer is like the special teams captain. <laughs> Manny Machado is like the real captain. He's the quarterback. He's the one that's going to be out there and put the C on his chest. And Eric, Eric the, Hosmer is the guy who goes out for the coin toss in overtime. Where they right. just go, who? Hey, you, 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 go who out you? there. The, the long snapper. Pick the long heads. snapper. Always pick heads. Go, go, go. Like, Hosmer's probably a really good guy to have in the locker yeah, room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he's not, he's, he was the guy that came in to replace Will Myers because Will Myers was not the guy, right? They were always looking to be the leader of the team and right. they kind of anointed Will Myers as that. And he clearly doesn't want that position, no. No, obviously. And then Eric Cosmo's like, yeah, I'm coming in. I'm a World Series champion. I'll, I'll come in. I'll, I'll bring some veteran leadership into this, into this clubhouse. But now you got guys like Machado and Tatis that the team rallies around and respects. I'm not sure. I'm not saying they don't respect Hosmer, but right. it's very clear they respect Machado. And it'll be even better when they get Chris Bryant. Because you imagine Eric Hosmer coming up with the swag chain idea and him bringing it into the It, the would, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. I don't know if it would have worked either. I think work. the fact that it was Manny and just the, I, I mean, I hate the word, but I don't know another word, like the, the swag that he has on that team. You know who? Like it, you know who else the chain would because now it gets my brain running. Like, who on this lineup could have brought that chain and, and it would have worked? Because obviously, Manny, obviously Tatis. I think Will Myers could have brought that chain too. And yeah, it would have yeah, worked too. For a whole different reason. Right, because he's 100%. so silly. I think though, if Hosmer tries to do it, it's be like no. mm, I know you're from Miami too, but where'd you get eh, this? Is this yeah. real? 
Yeah, but the fact that Manny did it, and you know, you can tell how excited he was when they first got it because yeah. there wasn't any rules for it. They were just he just gave it to Nola, and he's like, "Wait, I didn't even hit a home run." So you could just tell how excited he was to bring that chain in. Yeah, I think Manny has proven, and I don't even like to bring it up because it's just not true. The whole hustle thing, like it was dumb. People always like tweeting like Manny doesn't. Hustle. I don't even bring it up because it's just clear. If you watch the Padres play, it's not true. It's it's. Maybe it was a. Pre- I actually kind of had that perception of him too, right? But watching him every single day, or he was a dirty player because he spiked somebody at first base, right? But all those things were probably accurate in the time. But now, watching him day in and day out, it's clear that that's just not true. Yeah, I mean, and when a guy gets to your team, the plays that you deemed he did as dirty when he was on the other team, you he, now he's now your team. Now he plays hard. Right. Okay. He he's a competitor. Okay. All the lines that people say about Tom Brady when he erupts on on teammates. Oh, he, he just wants to win. You start saying those type of things when those plays happen. And so I I don't I think he's the same player. He's just on our team now, and he's giving our guys something that he didn't give the Dodgers, and he's giving our guys something he didn't give the Orioles because the Orioles were never in contention, and the Dodgers he was basically a hired gun for them who didn't hit the target. Now he came in for four months, and they're like, hey, let's go win, and they just fell short. Right, so. and they didn't. So now he's here. He's the leader of the franchise. He's our highest-paid guy, and it's working out. Yeah, and it's kind of great, too, because he gets to be the leader. He gets to be almost the underappreciated person on the team, too, right. because everybody's going to focus on Tatis. Mm-hmm. Everyone's going to focus on his flashiness, his power, his numbers. He'll be in the home run derby. Like No one's clamoring for Machado to be in the home run derby, right. but Machado gets to be this underrated superstar which is why he's fourth in all-star voting and not first in all-star voting on third base because he is still, I believe, underappreciated by this fan base. I think for the most part around the league, he's still disliked. No, 100%. Because the national narrative about him is he doesn't hustle and that he is a dirty player. Because whenever you get a national game, there's still people saying that kind of stuff about him or bringing it up that this was said about him, not saying that they believe it, but bringing it up that you know people say Blah, blah, yeah. blah. So, And I'm pretty sure I am attributing the correct quote to him saying, they don't boo you if you suck. Right. So I'd be curious. I'll keep an eye on that. Next time the Dodgers or the Padres play the Dodgers, which is not till August. Well, I'm trying to think, where can the Padres go where they're hated? I'll just I'll keep an eye on it. Who gets a louder boo, Tatis or Machado? Where? Anywhere. I think it's Machado. I think Tatis probably gets booed way more in uh, in Texas for the Rangers. Yeah, I don't think we're going back there though this year. Okay, uh, so let's let's do the Giants. See who gets. Well, they don't yeah. really have anything against the Giants. That's what I'm saying. Like next time they go to Dodger Stadium, right? I think Machado gets the louder booze. I don't think he's like there at all. I I know people don't necessarily miss not having him on the team, right? It's probably because they have Justin Turner, who's good. But yeah, it's it'd be. You're right. I think he's he's clearly hated yes. across the league. Yes, clearly, clearly hated. Uh, someone else that's clearly hated by a lot of fan bases, including ours, is Trevor Bauer. But he did say something yesterday that I'm sure raised a bunch of eyebrows because Dave Roberts, after the game, also said, I don't necessarily agree with Trevor. But Trevor Bauer, after the game, said that, you know, the Padres just wanted it more. A good team. Um, and they absolutely kicked our ass in the intensity, uh, from the intensity standpoint. Like, they came to play and we didn't. So that's what happens in baseball. You come out and... You know, try to attack the other team and try to win. Um, and when you don't have that mindset, then you, you get rolled. And um, yeah, we got rolled. So, so, so we got rolled. Yeah, no, no. I actually, don't actually think that's one hundred percent accurate. I think, and whether that's uh, you know, I think Dodger fans will be like, yeah, because we don't care. It's a lot of rivalry, and and we don't care. Well, maybe the Padres did care because they came out, and you could clearly see that who who wanted it more. It, you know what? It's one of those things where the team who knows they're not going to win pretends to be nonchalant about it. I think that played a lot into it, too, because Mookie Betts ended up missing the third game and being taken out of the second game because of some type of stomach virus. Shout out to the gas lamp. I just I, I don't I don't I don't buy that. Got to be careful with those street hot dogs, man. You got to be careful with the nightclubs, too. I just I just I don't I don't necessarily think that it's. I don't think it was that. I think they I think they got outplayed. I think they came ready to play. They just got beat by a better team. Like and it happens. It happens again when it's an amped up series like that. Cuz they could have easily won two of those three games. 
So let's not sit here again and act like the Padres scored 12 runs to their two. Like in the ninth inning, this was still a game. They had a man on first and second. Yep. So it wasn't. Oh, but then Machado did it. You know what I mean? Line and caught by Machado. Throw to second. Hey. Double play. It's the ball game. Manny Machado, who's done it all tonight, does it Ooh. again. This double play ends this game, and the Padres sweep the Dodgers in a three-game series. They- I want to ask you, too, because this could be a whole different discussion, but I, I noticed Mud and Don talking about All-Stars and who should be – who could represent the Padres in the All-Star. I think we all know Tatis is going to make it. Right. That's pretty much a given, and we could talk about this more when we come back. Um, they did keep pointing out Joe Musgrove and Mark Melanson and I kind of put some numbers together. When you really take a look at Joe Musgrove's numbers, he's been incredibly good. I mean, you take the record out of it because that's the team thing. And his run support has been pretty awful all season. But, you know, Joe's got top 10 numbers pretty much in almost every statistical category. Mark Melanson leads the league in, in saves. And he's got the most innings pitched by, I believe, a closer. This could be the first time the Padres have n- multiple representatives. I mean, I know they had Drew Pomerantz and Will Myers here. You, you, but you, there should be a solid four, and I know, I know, I, I know the Padres are aiming to get Cronenworth in there too. I don't know how many they're going to get, but it shouldn't just be to You're That's definitely sure. forgetting you, Darvish. I am, I am, but because they were point, I was, I, I put those three guys up there because they were talking about them on the broadcast. Oh, last okay, night. but you, Darvish, and Joe Musgrove, besides win loss, they're pretty much the same. I think you may be looking at maybe five guys. Like a legit five guys make it. So I mean, that's gotta that's gotta be a good sign. Yeah. We'll discuss that. Well, I kinda am curious if you're in the chat, who do you think should be an all-star? We'll talk about that. But coming up next, our boy Jason Lothead talking NBA right now. Welcome back, everybody. Kaplan and crew with just the crew, Alex and Browner. Got you guys for this is our Friday, but well, thank you everybody for joining us this week. It's been fun. Me and Browner, by the way, I was thinking about this last night. We've never done more than one show together by ourselves until this week. Like this right. is the first time me and you have ever done shows together for longer than just one fill-in. Right. And I feel like did we get better or worse as the week went on? Well, I think we I, I think it's been smooth. I think it's been good content provided. Yeah, after yesterday, after me being a little hungover yesterday, I feel like you know, did pretty the, the, good, man. The Burt segment was a little rocky, but other than but that. But it's always rocky. Right, right. I mean, when is it not rocky? And then I saw him tweet yesterday because the 1090 was like, hey, make sure you catch, catch Kaplan and crew tonight on Cox Earview Channel 4. And then Burt goes, I ain't watching S until I'm part of it. And I just want to I just want to tweet back like, well, how about you try and be part of it, Burt? <laughs> God, he's never going to make it. He's never going to make gonna it. Make. But we were just talking about this right now. Jason Lott will join us soon. Um. We were just talking about this right now. I and I think it's a kind of interesting conversation because this all-star voting is happening right now. Phase two, not phase four, Boca Del Vista. Shout uh, out. Phase two of the all-star voting is happening right now. I see the Padres really pushing for Jake Cronenworth. Um, but who should represent the Padres All-Stars? I put these three up on the screen because these are the three they were talking about on the broadcast yesterday. I think Browner makes an excellent point. I think you Darvish probably should be mentioned if Joe Musgrove is mentioned, obviously. Mark Melanton, I think, definitely needs to be in the All-Star game. He has the most saves in baseball. And it's traditional for the Padres catcher to be the All-Star. Yeah, the closer, yeah, for sure. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tatis All-Star. is going to make it. He's going to be the top five, top three vote-getter of all of baseball. Right. That's no big deal. Um, You know, third base in the National League, you got Chris Bryant, you got Nolan Arenado, you got Justin Turner. And the reason why I think that's difficult to beat those guys, Chicago, St. Louis, Los Angeles. It's not necessarily the player; it's the city it's that the they play, there. and the activity of that in the activity of the fan base. The Cubs have a very strong national fan base, and if nothing now that it's done on the, uh, uh, you could do it by phone. You don't have to do like the little fill out thing. I think that uh, Chris Bryant is going to be a shoe in to be the starter at third. By base. the way, uh, my f- my internship at Mighty Ten Ninety, mm-hmm. my f- like the f- first month of my job as an intern was to sit in an empty office and punch ballots for Adrian Gonzalez. You're jo- Ew, what? Yeah, that's how long ago it was, like 2009. And the Padres were making a huge push to get Adrian G- Gonzalez in the All-Star game. And Mighty 1090 was their partner, so we were, ho- we were joining him. There was a room full of boxes to the ceiling 
that that's literally all I did. And then if and then if when we went out to events or anything like that, we would bring a box with us to do it in at the event. Like I'd be sitting seeing like Scott and BR doing their thing, and I would be in the corner punching ballots and making sure there wasn't any hanging chads. Wow. So you're the you're the guy that messed up the election integrity, huh? Pretty much. Like you're welcome, Adrian. You're welcome. I probably voted for Adrian Gonzalez like ten thousand times. Oh. How grueling was that? After a while, like once you get rid of the the feeling in your fingertips and the and you kind of like figure out that if you get a little sponge to just keep wetting your fingers to make it easy to flip through ballots and stuff, because it wasn't like he was on the first page. It was like I had to like open them all up, then punch it, then close it back. Like so it was a pain in the ass. But wait, so you were just voting for him? That was it. That was it. The whole push was they at that time, they weren't I mean, who else? So Sorry, Heath. I know you made it eventually, but um, <laughs> at the time, the push was for Adrian. It was like there was a whole marketing campaign. 1090 was a part of it. But I don't think we're... Yeah, you said we don't have to do that no more. I can imagine right. interns now like putting in fake emails and uh, then voting six times a day. That's way harder. Way harder. You're asking me for an email to confirm my identity? Nah. Nah, I'm good. So anyways... Don't track don't track me, bro. The Padres are off today, and it is a great off day because they don't have to travel. They don't have to go anywhere. This is a real, real off day. And then you get to play the worst team in baseball, the Arizona Diamondbacks, for the next three games. And I'm saying who you right now. Who can't win a home game. I'm, who can't win a road game, I mean. Yeah, they've lost 23 straight road games. Padres. I'm not saying you have to sweep them, but you got to win two, and you should bro. sweep them. <laughs> so let's say this right. Let's, let's get this out of the way right yeah. now. When they lose the first game, it's over. Everyone's gonna go crazy. It's over. Everyone's gonna go crazy. How come you can't beat the Diamondbacks? Why they are we losing to bad to... teams? I guarantee you. Who's wait? Who's pitching tomorrow? I was about to check right now. It's got to be Lamette or Paddock, probably. If it's Paddock, you know Paddock's been Paddock's very been good. good lately. Yeah, Paddock's been very good lately. So if it's Paddock, I'm I'm feeling a little more comfortable than usual. Uh, so. Uh, if it was Weathers, I'd feel a little more, a lot more comfortable. Oh, Weathers but. is down in triple. Okay, this is according to ESPN. You got Chris Paddock tomorrow, Lamette on Saturday, and Darvish on Sunday, and then they go back onto the East Coast for it's a mix, six right? six road game Reds and Phillies. Ooh, so yeah. Look, man, I'm t- we look. That's uh, so that's two three gamers on the East Coast, three and three. Yeah. So six and then three against the Diamondbacks. Seven out of nine ain't bad. Yeah, I don't like. I don't know the Phillies record. I don't know if they're good. We just saw the Reds. They fell below five hundred, but uh, the Phillies are thirty four and thirty seven as well. So they're not like world beaters. I mean, you do have to travel to the East Coast, right? Um, and you only it's actually you play at four o'clock, and you play at three o'clock on Friday. So there you go. You knock those. You listen. You win. You win this series. So you go seven in a row. You go nine out of. You go nine out of ten, and then you win seven out of the next nine. Look at us getting all mathy right now. But here's the thing: that we always see going this into in, the All Star break. We always see this in baseball. We always see this in baseball. You have this massive playoff type series against the Dodgers, and now you got the Diamondbacks coming to town. So I, if they lose that first game, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I mean, me neither. That's why I said that. But this team, if they've been nothing, they've been professional. Yeah. And I mean, professional from a standpoint of they don't take any team for granted. They come out Except every day ready to play. In Colorado. Well, that's true. Yeah. Have you played? Uh, have, you, the, have you been in Colorado? So the Diamondbacks lost 17 in a row, and then they beat the Brewers game one of their series, and then they've lost the last two, and they're off tonight as well. So the Diamondbacks are going to come in losers of 19 of their last 20 games. And they're bringing your favorite broadcast guy with you, yep. with him, Rob Brindley. Oh, yeah. I don't know if he's still in sensitivity training or not, or if he's completed and it has a certificate, but that should be fun. If anything, if the baseball's terrible, at least you always have Brindley to yell at because the Padres are hitting too many home runs with chains on. Imagine what he's going to say about this chain. He was oh. he was bad about Tatis' chain. Imagine what he's going to say about uh, this chain. Let them get down four or five runs. He going to go off and on that chain. I have noticed, what? and I have noticed this week, now that the umpires... They better, they, they better not put it on Tommy Pham. He really going to have a field there. Now, or or Tatis or Machado. He hates both of those guys. Um, I have noticed, and I don't know if you've noticed, 
the Padres have attacked the Dodgers in the first inning as the pitchers adjust to no sticky stuff. Yeah. So if they go out and they jump on the Diamondbacks in that first inning and Brantley's all salty from day from <laughs> inning one. He's going to yeah. make an insensitive comment about the swag chain. That is going to uh, happen. It will be an apology issued by the fifth and inning we'll see if, if they get down we'll see if he We'll see if he has racist uh, sentiments about just the, his la- the Latin players or if Hassan Kim wears it. Is it a universal? You know what I mean? Like, we'll get to, we'll get to really <laughs> see here. If this guy goes offensive on Kim, he's done. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, I don't know. Like, can't... I, I without looking it up, I have no idea if he's actually on the broadcast right now or if he's taking time away for sensitivity training, like he said he was going to do. I have no idea. So we'll figure this out on Friday. Oh man, now I'm interested in that series. Me too. Me too, by the broadcast standpoint, <laughs> at least. I might go. I just saw tickets are twenty dollars. I might go. Really? Well, we're off tomorrow, and I think my LA plans got got uh, xed. So I might go tomorrow. See what's up. Yeah, I see, you were going to Oxnard anyway. You're so phony. Not Oxnard, L.A. Oh. I had a I had a good friend of mine just moved to L.A. to in the Koreatown area, and we were going to go just kind of explore a little bit. Where'd they move from? From here. Oh, for work, not Whoa, for pleasure. I, I saw an article. <laughs> I saw an article on Yahoo that Hollywood stars are even moving to Texas, and I was like, huh? Yeah. Joe, who, are these, Joe Rogan? who are these Hollywood stars? No, it was three females. Uh-huh. I go look at this, read the article. I'm like, who was in Drill Bit Taylor? Drill nah. Bit Taylor? <laughs> nah. Y'all, y'all got me with the clickbait. Ain't no, them women ain't on stars. Get out of here. Drill Bit Taylor. What is that even movie? It's a movie with Owen Wilson in it. He oh. is the drill instructor of these three kids who get beat up a lot. And so then they pay him. Oh. To defend, to teach them how to fight, and to defend them against a bully, but he's really just a homeless guy in military pants. Got it, got it, got it. God, why do I know so much about that? I saw a TikTok this morning comparing Joe Rogan to Oprah. How in the '90s, Oprah was a talk show who basically just interviewed celebrities, and then sometimes talked about current event, and then sometimes brought on nut jobs, and all (laughs) women always referenced Oprah, and then guys would always roll their eyes, like talking about women talking about Oprah, and now it's like. Joe Rogan has a show interviewing celebrities, sometimes topical events, and every now and then a nut job. And every mm-hmm. man references Joe Rogan, and women roll their eyes about Joe Rogan. So it's like the same thing. Just, I mean, I kind of roll my eyes about Joe Rogan. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm over it. I roll my eyes at people that that reference Joe Rogan for information, facts. Yes, which he, by the way, come in, came out and said, "Hey, I do not." Do not take this right. show as like some fact-based right. piece of news. But Joe Rogan is also has to understand that his platform is huge. So if he says mm-hmm. something, he doesn't have a responsibility, but to play the card of don't listen to me, I'm an idiot. Well, don't right. be an idiot and realize that you have a giant fan base. Right. It, but it's not like me saying urologist over virologist. It is like, <laughs> I'm an idiot too. And if you reference me for your medical advice, then I'll roll my yeah. eyes at you. Yeah, you're in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Hope you had a good life because it's about to come to an end. Exactly. Because if you go and you have COVID-19 and you go to a urologist, you will probably not do well with COVID-19. And you will infect them. Right. So anyways, Browner. Okay. I'm going to ask you because we'll, we'll talk to Jason Lawhead next. So let's just save the basketball for, for him because we know he wants to talk about everything that's happening there. You want to do Holiday Bowl? You want to do... Holiday Bowl. I don't even care what the other thing is. Okay. Holiday Bowl. Because I had no interest in this game. I thought they wouldn't even plan it here. I thought it was suspended until further notice. The Poinsettia but... Bowl has been axed. That's that's the that's one that's been is. axed okay. for a while. Um, but the the Holiday Bowl no longer is Pac-12 versus Big Ten. It's Pac-12 Ooh. versus ACC. So, but it's moving, and they were there. They didn't have a home. Obviously, it worked out this year because COVID, so they didn't have to worry about where are we going to play. Right. Um, I'm not even sure. I don't remember. Did they have plans to play at Carson like everybody else? They probably had probably, to. probably, but instead it was announced. Uh, it was told by the UT last night, announced this morning. The Holiday Bowl will be played at Petco Park. The Holiday Bowl's new home is Petco Park. And if you're watching, they have a beautiful rendering of what fun. the field will look like. Um, and it looks great. What do you think, JB? The only question I ask is how can we get a more bigger time game in there? Because that looks bomb. Yeah, I will definitely go and see this, regardless of who the teams are. 
the Holiday Bowl will be played at Petco Park for a minimum of the next five years. So how many people are we get in here? 40,000? Because, you know, these bowl games like to try to get 70,000 people. Yeah. I'm trying to read. I should have probably read the uh, the entire press release. I just saw the rendering and I got excited. I look. I, the only thing about these college bowl games, man, is they like to cram a bunch of people in. They don't. They don't go for scenic. Mm-hmm. They go for crowds. They go for who travels well. And if you get an opportunity, if you're in the ACC to come to San Diego for whether it be for recruiting or whether it be just to to see have your kids see the West Coast, I think this is a great opportunity, man. Because I know a lot of these guys don't want to go to L.A. There's nothing in L.A. Yeah, but they would prefer to come to San Diego. The beaches are cleaner. There's a little more to do. There's l- less traffic. So you can have a you have way more fun here for a bowl game than you can in Los Angeles they, or San Francisco. They sent me or they sent in the press release a ton of renderings. So if you want, I can just show you all the angles that they give me gave. a couple. Here's this one. Here's the side view from the sidelines, which is the third base side. Uh, if you see, they're, they're going to add some stands on the right field side where this uh, where it's normally the the whiskey bench. Right. So that it looks like they're going to push that back for for. for or add some, excuse me, for this football game. Because they got to get 70,000 people. You need some sideline space here. So that's what they have. Let me pull up some more. Um, but I love this, man. And, and honestly, when the when the Chargers moved, and I'm not trying to make this about the Chargers. I'm just telling you what we were saying. Um, we said this, like, why are they going to Carson so quickly? Right. When they can try and play at Petco, but it, it's probably a whole thing as to what, same reason why a San Diego State is not playing at Petco. The pot, the Padres don't want this during the season, and football season I, starts in September. I like this rendering that has the fake fans, but who are clearly from another college game. I think there's like a Stanford hat or something. <laughs> well, Stanford will play. You know, they'll probably play there. If if this works, if this works out, did they say which place the team has to be in? Like, can it be a conference winner? I doubt if it's if the Pac-12 conference winner is not going to be in the Holiday Bowl. Listen, I, if I was in the Rose Bowl, I'd, I'd start calling some people saying, hey, listen, if we get a top 10 team here, it's better for us. It's better for you. ESPN, make this a national game. Let's have a good, let's it have a national fun. game. The Holiday, Bowl, the, the, the Holiday Bowl is not national, is it? Yeah. Every oh, what? On ESPN. Oh, what, CBS? No, it's always on ESPN. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. Come on, Browner. I don't be watching the Holiday Bowl, man. I want to see no trash teams. It's a, a, a new Power 5 matchup. This year's SDCCU Holiday Bowl will debut a matchup of top teams from the Pac-12 and ACC. One of only a handful of games featuring a Power 5 matchup. The game's new pair league will surely provide unique matchups and high-scoring contests to add to the legacy of America's most exciting bowl game. You know what it's time for them to do? Mm. Get this bowl game. In the 12th playoff, in the 12th team playoff. Now we talk. Yeah. As much as I love the Holiday Bowl, I would much prefer a um, a 12th team playoff. So they're, they're going to do it. Look, they're going to do it. They lost too much money during the pandemic. Another good thing, they came out of the pandemic. What? So if, oh, if the Bulls? The Bulls game. The Bulls games are going to go away because they're going to do 12 teams. So if we can get one of those six games to be at Petco, now we talking. Cause that, I'm talking, that's gonna be bum. Cause then you get real teams out here. Um, I don't want to see. I don't want to see the third place Pac-12 team against the third place ACC team. I don't want to see that. Well, here's something that's probably exciting for a lot of people. If bowl eligible, but not in a college football playoff game, Notre Dame is available for the Holiday Bowl. Ooh, right. Yeah, they travel well, and they usually have good good kids. They also get pumped up at the beginning of the year, so they're always a top ten team, regardless of what happens. So I'm, I mean, I'm not anticipating seeing them, but if they would, dude, that'd be a bonus. Yeah, I don't know exactly what the um, matchup is. I'm trying to figure it out. I thought I had it in front of me, but it's just it keeps saying top teams, top teams. Yeah, that can mean anything. Top four, top five. Yeah, but I mean, listen, I, I, I have been to many holiday bowls where USC played in it, and that's that's probably what they want every year. If if UFC finishes USC finishes second, then that's probably what they want. They probably want a USC Miami, a USC Clemson, a USC um, Notre Dame. That would that would be fantastic. A USC Notre Dame game or US USC Miami game. Woo! Mm-hmm. Dan mm-hmm. Silly gonna be out there. Big turn. 
Uh, even with the extra seating, Petco Park will fit about 50,000 fans. Well, and as far as it, uh, Petco Park becoming the Holiday Bowl's permanent venue, it's not clear. Organizers said the future of San Diego State University Sports Stadium would be far too small for the Holiday Bowl crowds. I think if you're if if you're Petco Park, you need to also get events in there, and this fits because this will be well after the football season. Yeah, I mean, well, well after the baseball season, they don't have enough time to do what they need to do to get the field back in the condition for baseball. But if you're gonna if you're gonna have such a beautiful facility, just well, put I the remember, concert in there. Well, I remember they uh, I saw the Rolling Stones there. And they had a massive, massive stage. And they did it in the middle of the baseball season. And when they came back, it, the grass was jacked up. It was yellow. You could see the outline of where the stage was at. So I'm not sure how many more concerts they want to do in game in season. But yeah, I mean, Peco, Peco with Comic-Con coming back in November, I'm sure they'll do stuff. They're doing uh, the links at Peco. That's happening during the All-Star break. They're doing it in the, the summer, thing. the golf thing, which we've done. Well, we I don't know if you've come with us before. I've never been invited to that thing, dude. I'm sure we can go this. Well, I will be in Cabo, but I'm sure you and Scott can go. It's it's I believe it's Del Mar opening weekend, too. Ooh, okay. So we have two minutes happened. left, and then Jason Lawhead's gonna come on. But I need to okay. show this fight. I need to show what happened yesterday between the Tijuana Toros and another team that I don't know who played. But here it is, Browner. This assault, brother. This is assault. Look at this. This man gets hit and chucks the bat at him. And chucks his helmet oh. at him. You tell me that if that bat that he threw at him connects, that that guy's not going to jail for, if he hurts him. Look at this. You know what I believe when this happens a lot of times? The guys have no intention of actually making contact with that bat. Because if you did, he only had another two feet to run. Yeah, he could have like you swung at him. You made some real contact. I think when guys run to the mound with the bat, they don't really intend on doing any real harm. The best fight I've ever seen where a guy ran out with something, he kicked the catcher first. Yeah. I, I thought that was awesome. He, like, dropped – not drop kick, but he, like, back kicked the catcher. Yeah. yeah I remember like that one. Like, samurai kicked him. Yeah. Pow! And then ran out to the mound. See, I, did, I don't think he had any real intention on hurting this guy. Yeah. But it, the fight ended up getting crazy, but they never, like, zoomed in, so you couldn't really tell. But anyways, that's our Tijuana Toros. That's our Tijuana Toros. Goes to show you why he playing for Tijuana. He couldn't even make <laughs> anything close. That thing went left hard. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Well, everybody, thank you guys for uh, watching this week. If you're watching on television, go to KaplanandCrew.com. You can watch the rest of the show that doesn't come out on the TV show. Um, it's been a lot of fun, but we're not done yet. Coming up next, Jason Lawhead. He will join us to talk about what is happening in the NBA. We're going to let Browner and Jason go. We're just going to let them go. Let's talk some hoops. Kawhi is out for the Clippers tonight. Chris Paul is back. Probably bad news for the Clippers, but the Clippers have gone down 0-2 every series, mm -hmm. and now they're down 0-2 again. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about Trey Young, and we'll see what else we talk about with Jason Lawhead when we come back here on Kaplan and Crew. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Kaplan and Crew with just a crew hanging out with you, wrapping up this week. We got a little three-day weekend ourselves, but Scott Kaplan uh, he'll be back on Monday. He's on vacation visiting his parents for the first time in 16 months since COVID. But joining us right now is Jason Lawhead, comedian, basketball analyst, but most importantly, great friend. Jason, I before we talk anything with basketball, we have questions about Scott and the Swag Chain shirt. Because yeah, you that, were with him. Supposedly, yeah. you were with him on Saturday at Tory yeah. Point. Well, you were with him on Saturday at Tory Point for the U.S. Open on Saturday for the third round. I'm, fr I'm free to admit that I was w with him. I'm, right. I, I'm good to admit. Okay. Yeah. Now, was he wearing the swag chain shirt the entire time, or did he post for pictures and then change shirts? All day long. And I got to tell you something. It was funny because we followed Charlie Hoffman a couple of holes, and Charlie was struggling on Saturday, but still grinding, right? So we watched maybe – you know, we would have walked his last few holes into 18 green and uh, off 17 tee. He hits a good drive off 17, and he's walking off the tee box, and we're walking along the ropes, and, and Cap goes, hey, nice shot, Charlie. And Charlie looked over and just started cracking up, and he goes, yeah, nice shirt, and just kept walking. <laughs> but, uh, but what was funny was is it's really cool. Early on, Kaplan got recognized way more than I would have thought. Like, people, we were just walking through crowds. People, hey, Scotty Kaplan, hey, man, big fan, you know, da da da. And, and we're walking around. And then it was either they recognized Kaplan 
and didn't say anything about the, the shirt. Or they people were just walking by going, dude, awesome shirt, and didn't ri- recognize Kaplan. And literally until we left, there was one guy that put them both together. They're like, hey, Scott Kaplan, I listen to the show all the time. He's like, cool, man, thanks. And then he goes, oh. Oh, awesome shirt. Can you get me one of those? The Kaplan's <laughs> like, yeah, send me your DMs. I'll send you. It's like a, it's a one-off. So he, it was kind of funny that, that, that finally at the end I go, man, finally somebody put it together. They, they recognized you and gave you props for the shirt at the same time. Yeah, I'm not so, sure. Uh, he definitely 100% did not think the Padres were going to win seven in a row. No way. He God, never no. would have committed now to he's in Now he's in Pompano Beach wearing it like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing. I, the reason he I asked like a him, homeless huh? meth head out there. Like People are like, what, what's, this, what's this shirt from on this guy from? Right? Yeah, nobody watches baseball in Pompano Beach. <laughs> And I was, I was gonna. I, the reason I asked you if he was wearing the chain the whole time is because he's there with Rachel, and there's no way she's letting him wear the no. shirt the entire time. Oh right, see, yeah, he wasn't there with Rachel. So we walked in, said you know through the gates, and he immediately took it off. He had a little little pullover, and then we realized it is warmer than it, than it, it looked when we finally left and when we got to the course. So he had no, he took it off and wore it the whole time, man. I'll, I'll give him credit, but yeah, I would agree. That with Rachel down there going out to places, that thing is either getting covered up or coming off, and he's only doing two or three social media posts a day about yeah. it. Yeah, well, whatever he's doing, he's got to keep it doing because the Padres won seven in a row. Hey, the man, did the, the, sweeping the Dodgers. Did the, did the bang bus just pull up next to you? What's happening here? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I had to pull off. Like I said, I got this rental car. It took me forever, so I had to pull off the road to do the interview a little bit. I'm uh, back in Ohio doing some shows. Uh, where I grew up, so uh, how is uh, a little longer to get my rental car? How but. is life back in the clubs, man? It's great. I got to tell you, man. I have been like uh, beaming since like the last couple weeks when I finally started getting back on regular stages. I was up in L.A. last week for two shows, a great outdoor show that was kind of invented during COVID um, in the back back parking lot of a club right on Hollywood Boulevard. I mean, it's really cool. And then they walled in the out the outer perimeter with uh, soundproof walls, and then the, the, the show's in the round. It's called Supernova. And if anybody's up in that L.A. area listening or going to L.A. anytime soon and you're, you're a comedy fan, check out the Supernova show. Just look at Supernova Comedy L.A. It's the hottest, best show, greatest lineups. I was on a show with Anthony Jeselnik, Whitney Cummings, Pablo Francisco, um, and it's awesome. The, you perform in the round, and I've never done that before. It was the first time I ever performed in the round, which was really cool. And it's just an amazing setup, like I said. And it's going to it's gonna live to stay uh, post-COVID because it's so popular. And they're doing, like, yeah, I think four nights a week, two shows a night with some of the best names in L.A. So I got to do that and then uh, was indoors the next night at the Ha Ha Comedy Club in North Hollywood. First full capacity indoor show. That was a lot of fun. People, you know, it's just there's a sense of just, revi- you know, just yeah, especially stand up. People want to go out. People and, ready and, to and, laugh. Yeah, they, they are. They're ready to be entertained and they're ready to laugh and they're ready yeah. to do the things that they took maybe for a little granted, right? Like we all did. We all took a little bit. We took we took being able to go to a ball game in a sellout or buy, you know, tickets off of a scalper because it's, uh, um, you know, hey, it's sold out, but you're still going to go. Like all those little things that we're kind of getting reacclimated to. It's exciting in a way. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, you know, um, some people can't handle it, but I think a lot, most people can yeah, dude, Petco Park. The, I was there on Tuesday night, and just being around forty-five thousand people, it it almost it felt right. I don't know what uh, yeah. other way to describe it. It just felt right, and then it felt right to be able to complain about things again. You know, complaining about yeah. long, oh, complaining about long lines, complaining about having to pee next to somebody in a urinal. You know, like it was right. those kinds of things that you just forgot you had to do in life that we get to complain about again. Totally. It's a great point, you know, and like I said, it's uh, it's kind of a little bit of a reawakening, I think, for a lot of people to realize, like, you know, we have it really good even when we complain about the little things like standing in line or whatever this is or whatever that is. And uh, um, hopefully it just kind of proceeds in the, the right attitude as things go on. Some people can't, like I said, some people can't handle it. They, they can't handle being in public with, with a few things. But uh, I think for the most part, especially comedy fans, man, they're yeah. chomping at the bit. Well, you're not in California right now, but if we have any listeners in Ohio, uh, you're, are you headlining this weekend out there? Well, I'm are doing you? a charity event on Sunday, and then mm-hmm. I'm doing a little Jason Lawhead and Friends show with the guys I'm bringing in at a couple of small venues in Lorraine, uh, just some small favorite bar shows, uh, just to try to get a little 
you know, uh, civic pride going, inject a couple of the little spots that are just starting to get back to full capacity with some entertainment and some things that they don't regularly do. So I'm doing a little brewery that opened in our town uh, a couple. It's actually funny. When I grew up riding around the streets in my bike, this place used to be a uh, a lawnmower repair shop. And the guy built his, <laughs> his own little, yeah, man, he, he built his own little brewery in there. Now he's, he brews his own beer. So we're going to get about 50 people in that show and about 45 to 50 in a, another spot that I go to on Friday night. So we'll do Friday, Saturday, Sunday's the main event, charity event, and then uh, play a little golf on Monday and, you know, enjoy the family for a few days and come on back to California and get back to work and, uh, you know, hopefully keep booking more shows and, uh, you know, San Diego is going to be exciting. The comedy scene, a laugh factory just opened this past weekend in the gas lamp. You've got the comedy store, obviously, as in La Jolla. You've got uh, the comedy, um, uh, American Alice. Comedy Company down in the, in the gas lamp. You've got the comedy uh, Madhouse down there, the Comedy Pals. You've got the Grand Comedy Club in Escondido, which is a great little room, well run. I opened for Jay Moore there last Friday, and the shows were sold out. Oh, no, they were great, so... And yeah, Adam Wasserman, you guys know Adam. He does a great job uh, uh, putting that place together and keeping it above water during COVID, and and, and uh, getting good acts in there. When you get to these clubs, when you get to these clubs after COVID, and you and you're starting to see things open back up, does it give you a sense of of pride to see how comedy and the clubs were able to stand through a time like this? Yeah, it really is, and it, what it, what it, what I it, it it really warms my heart about like why we are all in this comedians club owners you know the people that are around it it's like it is the true passion and it we will you know do everything we can and and to get you know uh to 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 survive right the club owners obviously they kind of had to almost be what a grinding comedian's been his whole life in the last year and a half and they've had to learn how to you know manage things when things aren't going well and two or three months in a row aren't getting you know, you're not getting good bookings and the money's not come. So, you know, I think uh, I think there's going to be a nice bridge of appreciation, too. I can already feel it, man. I can already feel like the positivity and emails from bookers and club owners about, you know, being more uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're being more, you know, respectful or more, you know, uh, generous and more, you know, uh, getting back to you right away. They're excited, you know, so the appreciation is nice- flowing both ways now. Yeah, there's nice. There's a nice mutual camaraderie that's that's strengthening, and uh, that's only going to be better for clubs, performers, audiences alike. And uh, you know, everybody's going to kind of be on the same page and, and know what each other has gone through. And like I said, like like we said, appreciate it more what we've taken for granted. And uh, yeah, I'm excited, man. I can't just keep keep waiting to get more bookings and go on stage and see more faces and more crowds and. Uh, and we'll let it, we'll let everybody know when you're back in San Diego too, or in Southern yeah, California, absolutely. so people go check you absolutely. out. But let's uh, let's switch over to uh, some hoops, man, because yeah. I'm not sure. I I would call this an unexpected NBA playoffs, but really, I don't think anything's unexpected when you have this many injuries. I mean, there's just injuries across the board. The Nets weren't healthy, and they got eliminated by the Bucks. The Lakers weren't healthy, they got eliminated by the Suns, and now the Suns are on this run where they look almost not unbeatable, but it's going to take something special to beat them. What do you think about the sun so far, man? Well, you know, going back to your original point, and we all knew this, right? We all knew even during a, a regular season that really doesn't even compare to what the playoffs are. You knew that the Nets were one injury away from – that's it. I mean, they built – so what I love about the Suns, what I love about the Hawks is, and I think a big reason why three of these four teams that are in it especially, and I'm not knocking Milwaukee, um, but what I'm saying about the, the, the other three teams are is that they are roster built. Like – you know, and, and and I think when you look at the Lakers, when you look at the Nets, when you look at the Sixers, when you look at some of these other teams that we thought were, wow, really, you know, strong favorites, um, they're not very roster built. The Suns and the Hawks, now these teams are roster built, right? If you're a novice fan and you're looking at, you know, the Suns on paper, I said this a few weeks ago, I mean, they've won nine straight playoff games. That's really hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> In a playoff run is win nine straight. But what, what they are is, they appear to be they appear to be on the surface stop booker you stop the suns well that's not true you know uh they can score 100 around booker easily they proved this the other night when they won uh with booker playing bad and yet the night he scored 40 they still put six guys in double figures and that's something he scores 40 the suns still get six guys in double figures the clippers only get three guys in double figures and i know their best players out 
But I think that's where you really see the difference. And I think the NBA is leaning that way. When LeBron and KD start, you know, they're, they're already on that other side of that kind of curve on their way out, right? When the big name players that can carry a team with maybe one or two other guys kind of get aged out, I think you're going to see more of these types of teams. There's a lot of great young talent in the NBA. And um, I think you're going to see a lot more of these teams, Memphis, these types of teams that are going to go, look, that's why the Jazz have been so successful. They haven't got over the hump with their roster built. Um, you know, the Nuggets maybe have relied on those two guys a little too much. When Murray going out, put a big uh, kind of wrench in their spokes. So the Hawks, even though they have a superstar guard, and the Suns, even though they have a superstar guard, <laughs> They are built around these guys in all the roles and all the situations you need to go uh, deep and win games. And I think what you're seeing is how well these teams perform in the fourth quarter backs up against it, the way they respond to runs, the way they don't go into these long scoring lulls like a lot of these teams that supposedly have one or two big stars. Right. But then when the role players go silent, when a Kuzma and a Caruso and these guys go quiet, guess what? You can't carry these teams anymore against teams like the Suns and teams like the Hawks and teams like the – you know, Clippers and, and even the Bucks. I mean, I don't think the, I think out of the four teams, the Bucks are probably the least roster built. They, they rely a lot on Giannis and Middleton to get most of their stuff. And, uh, you know, they play good team defense. Sure. But you saw a deficiency the, the last night with down the stretch, being able to get into slow half court situations and really get the most out of them. And that's where the I Hawks think beat them because the, yeah, two thing, the two things that I've gotten the most out of this playoffs is that the, the remaining four teams play defense one, mm-hmm. And two, I think the Suns, the Suns are getting a lot of credit and the Suns are on the wave and I get it. I'm with you. I'm enjoying the ride as well. Devin Booker has been great, but the Lakers got hurt in the first round. The Nuggets were hurt in the second round and now the Clippers are hurt in the third round. So they haven't played a healthy team yet. So, right. But that goes to my point though, being roster built. Yes, the yes. roster built defends that because we are. That's what we can say all right regular season. We can look at the Lakers like we said. We can look at the Nets. We can look at the Sixers and go. These guys are one injury. They're one turned ankle away from not being a factor in a real playoff series against a team that has a roster. Because I'll tell you what, Devin Booker might as well been hurt last night or tonight. Yeah. Oh, that was gross. Oh, that I mean, the way he played, right? They still come out with a win, and that's my whole point. Is and they didn't have that, Chris Paul either, so they were hurt too. And they didn't have Chris Paul either, <laughs> so. Yeah, gosh, I didn't even mention, you know. So I yeah. think the Suns really displayed the ability to say, hey, look, man, we can go in and we can we can play anybody any way. And, and I still think, right, like I still think AD and LeBron would have had to have been 100%. They still would have had to get guys. I still think the Suns, the longer that series went, they, they the Lakers gave one good effort after that game one loss, and then they got one terrible game from the Suns to go up 2-1. And after that, I think as the series would have got longer, I think the Suns still would have had a good chance to win that in seven had there I, been. I think so too. You know, I really do. But Browner, to your to your point, I think we can't forget our last real full NBA season, 2019. The story was all the injuries in the NBA Finals: Durant, Achilles, uh, yeah. Thompson, ACL, yeah. and then the Raptors won. But nobody brings that up. It, and then before that. When the when the Warriors beat the Cavs, Kyrie was out. Kevin Love I mean, was don't out. Get me wrong. I mean, I think, injuries injuries in the playoffs is it's such a grueling playoff for the NBA. It's like a right. it's a separate season, and it happens. Don't get me wrong. And it's a different it's season. It's nobody, not even the same thing. Nobody right. remembers. They're not even playing the same games. Nobody yeah. remembers how you won. They remember that you won. Right. Nobody right. remembers that. All these guys were out for the Warriors when, when the Raptors yeah. beat them with Kawhi. Kawhi gets all the credit that he Cleveland basketball in Toronto. All Cleveland that won't care that Steph Curry was hurt and Draymond Green got suspended. They got the title because right. that's what people remember. And so at the end of the day, if the Suns are able to win the title, no one will remember that the Lakers were hurt in the first round or the Nuggets oh. were hurt in the second round. No one will remember that. The people who remember the Suns championship will remember the Suns winning the championship. Just like the Lakers fans remember the championship last year. They don't care how they won it. They got it. Sure. Right. You know, and at the end of the day, they beat a fifth seed. And the Hawks might get to the finals as another fifth seed. Right. And that's where you're showing. That's where I think when I was saying earlier, the league is starting to, to start trending towards you got to build a roster more than you just got to get the two best players that you can and then hope that other guys fit in, in, in between them. So, you know, I mean, uh, you know, what they did getting Capella um, – and to, to be a force inside, 
to be a guy that can anchor the middle, that can rim protect, that can come in off a help defense and, and block a shot or alter a shot uh, was huge. And obviously the Nate McMillan hire, this guy has just flipped the script over there. And I think we talked a couple of years ago how much I liked Trey Young. I thought he was the most exciting player under uh, below the rim since Allen Iverson. I think he plays the game as as well and and as as good as as any point guard as we've seen in a long long time and he's a leader he's just a leader and you can see it out there when you watch the games these guys fall in line behind him uh he's quirky he's 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 he, he but guess what he's got these guys playing ball with him Trey, uh, they're Trey not young, they're not playing in spite of him Trey Young has been the biggest shocker I think and I'm gonna be 100 percent honest that I've seen probably in the last 10 years no Unicorn. one saw this. No one saw this coming. If you look at him statistically, you guys know how much I hate numbers. He's but better than him. Steph Curry was at this point. Mm-hmm. And everybody that got a college was comparing him to Steph Curry, Steph Curry, Steph Curry. Statistically, right now, he's better than Steph Curry was at this point in his career. He's taking his team further than Steph Curry did at this point in his career. Mm-hmm. I didn't see him doing this. I thought he was too small. And I thought he shot way too many long threes. Sounds just like Steph Curry when he came in the league. He's found a way more rapidly. I mean, the rules have helped him, but he's found a way more rapidly to turn the NBA into something that he can fit in at his own speed, like Luka has. And these guys were traded for each other on draft day, and everybody praises Luka, and they say Luka's the next great player, Luka's baby bird, and he's the next MVP and all. But Trey Young's still playing. Trey Young's still winning. I'm going to tell you something. I like Luke. I'm not knocking Luke. A young player's got He's got a long, a long career ahead of him. But I'll tell you right now, Trey's basketball IQ is better. Trey, I would agree. Trey, handle, Trey handles the half-court shot clock way better than Luca does, and he gets more touches to his teammates around. Yep. I'm going to tell you, the Hawks, as much as he's ball dominant, they, touch, they all touch the ball. They move the ball. They move without the ball. He moves without the ball better than Luka Doncic does when he doesn't have it. And he's got a better basketball IQ. Luka's great. He's got, and I'm not saying he doesn't. Luka has a bad basketball IQ. But Luka makes a lot of forced errors. I mean, he really does. Whereas I don't think Trey makes nearly as many forced errors because I think he has a better basketball IQ and he's under. he has the offense more under control. Um, and we'll see. Maybe Luka gets a new coach or – go somewhere else depending and I'm sure he's obviously uh, he's only going to get better as basketball IQ but right now like you said where where I mean where Trey Young is I think he's I think he's well ahead of Luca in a, in a couple of, as far as at least being the guy that you know look like you said he's still playing and you never know he's close he's he's three games closer to the NBA finals right now after what after what I saw last night because I watched every second of that game after what I saw last night what they they can re- they can repeat that they can repeat what they did against the Bucs. Oh, sure. He he, you know, he won't have to score 48 points, but they can no. repeat that. The Bucs are the Bucks are such a flawed good team. It's almost impossible to figure out what their problem is. <laughs> well, Giannis I, I don't, isn't it weird? They're weird. They're they're so good, but they're so weird. They're very they're, weird, man. they're very unorthodox. Cuz Giannis had a great game last night and they still lost. Brooke Lopez yeah. had a, a couple of times he had Trey Young guarding him, and he ran out to the three point line. Like I don't I get how they play, and I, I just I don't think I don't think anyone will. But and I you, feel like every every time you feel like Holiday's gonna just bust open, it, then it, it just go it just he never fin- it, It's like oh god, he scored two or three straight bu- or buckets right now, and and then he just then he just ceases to do like he goes. It's crazy how Holiday feels like he's going to bust wide open and take over the game, and then he did, and then he just doesn't. And they well, we'll see what happens. Like, to, we'll see what happens tonight with the because we're running out of time, JV. Sorry. Uh, yeah, we'll yeah, see what no happens hey, man. tonight we'll with the Clippers. Now that the uh, Chris Paul is back for the Suns, and then tomorrow night you got Game Two Hawks Bucks over there. Jason, have so much fun in Ohio, yeah. man, and congratulations Hello, on being back in the clubs, man. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, can't wait to talk to you guys in another week or two about what's been happening in the NBA. I'll be back in town. We'll do it again. Go Padres! Go Padres. Yes, Thank you, Jason. All right, guys. Take care. Oh, that was a great basketball conversation right there. Oh. Um, that's it for us, though, man. We're done. Yeah. We're done for the week. Yeah. This is just for podcast. Uh, thank you, guys. If you're here still, we really appreciate everybody tuning in. 
because if our views were zero, I don't think we would be doing this next time Scott's on vacation. So thank you uh, <laughs> very much for that. Browner, enjoy your vacation in New York, bro. Sounds like fun. We'll see. Uh, I'll report back. I may be doing a show there on Monday. Yeah, because that's a quick turnaround to be back on Monday. I think I'm going to be doing a show there on Monday. I'm almost positive I'm going to be doing a show there on Monday. What are you doing in New York? Like, I mean, you don't need to put your whole business out there, but what, what's the purpose of the trip? You just, say, you just answered your own question. Okay, so you don't want to tell us? No. Okay. You're so private. Why can't you just be like Scott and tell us every single thing that you do in your life? Because we have a person on the show already doing that. We don't need another one. People love to hear what you're doing. <laughs> they love to hear what Scott's doing. I know. Nobody cares. Like when I when I fucking talk about my housing shows, like nobody cares, but <laughs> nobody cares about like personally, nobody cares. Like people want the help of Gary Cooper, obviously, but nobody cares right. shit about man. <laughs> well, until you move in it and we do a live broadcast from your house. That's not happening. What? People ain't gonna see my home. We'll, my put, it, right we'll put it against a wall. We'll put it against a wall. It'll look like that. No yeah. one will know. We're not gonna do a drone shot from it's outside like, your house. It's like moving into like a shack or something. Well, that's true. Yeah. The fucking prices right now, dude. God, dude. My gosh. Like we put a cap on ourselves just to be responsible, just because it's ridiculous right now. And our cap and it, is and like it's smart, by the way. Our cap is like okay. I don't think I don't know even know if we're gonna find one. To Mecca, here we come. No way, Jose. That's too far. That's not even so San Diego far. anymore. That's Los Angeles. That's its point. Yeah. That's so, Anaheim. Well, have fun, bro. Enjoy yourself out there. Thank you to everybody that tuned in on the show. Uh, yes, we will be back. When are we back? Monday. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I forgot there for a second. So when are we back? We're back on Monday. We'll be on all week next week, I believe. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. 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 So, everybody, thank you all for tuning in. As you can see, I'm editing as I go. And uh, we'll talk to everybody on Monday. Peace.